Hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are watching this video from, if you are in India or if you are an Indian born, <laughs> then it's a very special day today. It's the completion of 75 years of our independence from the barbaric British rule, right? It's 75 years back when we snatched our independence from the Brits. So it's 75 years. Many of us, uh, most of us may not be fortunate to have uh, taken birth in the pre-independence era so that we could have witnessed uh, the independence movement ourselves. But maybe most of us are fortunate in another way that we are born in post-independent India. And maybe many of us will live to see 100 years, <laughs> 2047, right? Hopefully, everybody watching this video stays till then. So, it's a very special day uh, and uh, it's a very special age, very special year with all the chaos and mayhem going on in this world from last year. three years with the COVID, coronavirus, uh, and then the Russia-Ukraine war and also standoffs between Russia, uh, I mean, India, China, US, China, and yeah, China, Taiwan. So, so today, finally, we are celebrating that auspicious day, 15th of August, when India became independent in 1947, right? So, many times we get caught up with these numbers. Oh, India at 50, India at 25, India at 75, India at 100. So, of course, uh, we should have milestones. We should have uh, timelines. Nothing wrong with it. But along with that, we have to understand that India is not a civilization which is just 75 years old, right? So, this 75 years is only of our political independence, okay? which, of course, uh, which the credit goes to our uh, most uh, worshipable freedom fighters past uh, of the struggle. No, no doubt on that. At the same time, we have to understand that culturally, spiritually, India has always been a very vibrant nation. From years and years and decades, centuries and millennia, right? Because we... From modern history, we have the evidence of only a few thousand years. But if you go to the scriptures, like, you know, if you go to the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, Mahabharata especially, like 5,000 years back. So there is evidence of so many places like Dwarka, for example, right? So which is now discovered by the scientists, right? Then, of course, there are so many other places, you know, there's mention of the Himalayas, then there's mention of uh, the holy rivers and uh, so many div divine places, right? And therefore, we have to understand that although India became politically independent 75 years back, but it has been a timeless civilization. And that is why I would like to discuss today what, what is so special about this country. Uh, that makes it the way it is. So, what is so special about India? Is it uh, now when I say special, I mean to say what is there in India which is not there anywhere else? That's like the pinnacle of speciality. Right? It's like the crest jewel of speciality. Is it the Kohinu diamond? Is it uh, some famous cricketer or some famous film star? Or is it some famous politician? Or is it some famous scientist? Or is it some famous Nobel laureate? Some famous writer? Well, of course, all of them. But beyond and above them, there are the great sages, the great rishis, and the great kings that our scriptures talk of, right? So, for example, we have uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj was born in this very holy land of India, right? And what does India mean? Well, the word India has not much to do with India. 
So India's original name is actually Bharata, right? Bharat Bhumi. Bharat, uh, Bharat is a way of referring to India. Why? What, what is so special about this word Bharat? So the word Bharata means, uh, the word Bharata can be divided into two parts. One is Bha and one is Rata, right? So Bha means Bhaskara. Bhaskara refers to the sun. So what does the sun mean? Does it mean only light and you know heat? Well, not exactly. It means heat and light, but it also means the warmth of love and the light of knowledge. Right? That's what is the sun. And then what is rata? Rata. Rata means rati. Where there is rati? Rati means attachment, love, affection. Right? So, Arata, India is a place where there is eternally love for wisdom and spiritual growth. Right? Not the love of uh, the modern materialistic world which is shown in the movies in the West which is now inculcated by India and Indians also. The word Bharata means uh, the, Bhar the word Bharat actually is referring to Bharat Varsha which is uh, one of the islands of Huloka, right? Uh, not, not one of the islands of Huloka, it is one of the islands of one of the islands of Huloka actually. <laughs> so, as you know, uh, the Vedic scriptures say that there are 14 planetary systems. So, therefore, Buloka, the current uh, where we are staying, that is the seventh realm. Okay. So, there are six planetary systems above, and then there are seven planetary systems below. So, seven plus seven, 14. So, and within Within this Buloka, there are different, you know, islands and uh, it's a very detailed discussion. And within that, the central island is known as Jambudvip. Okay. So, within Jambudvip, there are different Varshas, right? One of them is Bharat Varsha. And there are Kim Purusha Varsha, Hari Varsha and so many other Varshas within Jambudvip, right? So like that, there are different dweeps, like another dweepa is Pancha dweep, for example, right? That's a topic for some other day. But what is so special about this tract of land known as Bharat Varsha within Jambudvi, which is within Buloka? This place, Bharat Varsha, is explicitly important for spiritual progress because this is a place where there is a good amount of happiness, materialistic pleasure, and a good amount of suffering, right? But there is no extremity here, which means you will not find extreme suffering, like in hell. Now, you will find suffering here if you go to some countries. I'm not saying there is no suffering. There is extreme suffering, but if you read about the descriptions of the other planetary systems which are below the Buloka, then you will feel you are in the heavens, right? Even if you are in a third world country, it's like heaven, right? Because uh, the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, has a lot of details about you know, hellish planets and uh, lower planetary systems. So compared to that, any third world underdeveloped country of this world is like a heaven, 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 heavenly planet, right? So there's not extreme suffering, right? Like in hell or in other planetary system. And there is no extreme pleasure. Pleasure is also very limited, right? So, now when I say there is there is not extreme pleasure, I am again comparing it with Swargaloka, which is one of the upper planetary realms. Okay? So, in Swargaloka, there is extreme level of, you know, materialistic pleasure. And in the Atala, Vitala, Sutala, Patal, Talatal, Mahatra, Rasatal, Mahatal, Patal. You know, these are planetary systems below. There is extreme level of suffering there, right? But Huloka, this Huloka, the seventh realm, is a place where there is some amount of suffering and some amount of happiness. So, this is a place where we have the chance to create karma, to either go upwards or go downwards, right? And, but of course, if you do spiritual practices, then you transcend these four 14 planetary systems. 
and you go to Vaikuntha planets, which are beyond the Brahmanda, which are in the spiritual realm, right? So therefore, this Bharatvarsha, which is a part of Jambudvi, which is one of the islands of Guloka. So Guloka has islands, and one of the islands is Jambudvi. Is the central island. So imagine Buloka is like this. There is one central island. The name of the island is Jambudvi. From there, there is the Mount Meru, which is going on, right? And around that, there is there are different varshas around Jambudvi. Okay. So among them, one is Bharat Varsha, right? Which is guarded by the Himalayas. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that. And you go beyond the Himalayas, so it's like if you go to China or Nepal or Bhutan or know, Mongolia, it doesn't mean that's away from Bharat Varsha. But when it says, you know, till Himalayas, it means uh, from a level of the perspective of consciousness and dimensions. So that is a higher dimension reality. Okay. So this specific land, so within Jambudvi, which is known as Bharat Varsha, is a very special land because here we have the chance to experience some materialistic pleasure to fulfill our needs and desires and wants to a certain extent and also obtain some level of suffering by which we can purify ourselves and then go back to the spiritual world. That is why Bharat Varsha is explicitly known for spirituality, right? That is why Bharat Varsha is known uh, by so many great kings who are like Raja Rishis and so many uh, great sages and saints, right? So therefore, if we really want to be a son or daughter of this great land, Bharat Varsha, then along with all the things that we do, Cinema, politics, you know, IT, medical, science, law, sports, luxuries, whatever is there. We will only become a true son or true daughter of this holy land of India if we take to spirituality seriously. Otherwise, if you disassociate spirituality from India, India is quite similar to any other country, right? So therefore, on this special occasion of Amrit Mahotsav, 75 years of our independence, yes, unfortunately, India has been under uh, occupation from foreign, you know, Islamic raiders uh, and then British for at least around a thousand years. That's very unfortunate. But now we have independence. Right? So imagine where India will be at 100 years, you know, 2047. So therefore, take the valuable knowledge of this great holy land of India and then distribute it to the fellow Indians, to other countries, to people of other communities, to every gender, every caste, every religion, Everybody, right? No discrimination of knowledge, right? Then we can actually experience the greatness of this nation. Now, as I said, there are other things like, you know, science, technology, wealth, prosperity, luxury, all these things are there and everything has its own place. But what is that which India has, which is not found? Now, if you see culturally, you will say, oh, India is very diverse. India is like a very tolerant nation which has, you know, like so many Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Jains, Parsis, Buddhists, Christians, everybody living together. Such diversity is not to be found. That is true. But if you go one level beyond, what is the, why at all is there this diversity? Because there is an underlying spirit of dharma. There is an underlying spirit of compassion. There is an underlying spirit there's an underlying belief that Ekam Sad Vipraha Bahuda Valanti, which means God is one, the truth is one, but sages call, call it by different names, right? So therefore, this belief that 
ultimately we have to become spiritual. We have to elevate our consciousness. Not that we have to become, we are already spiritual, but we have to elevate our consciousness spiritually. So this underlying belief gives us the strength for universal tolerance and to live life in a dharmic way. That is why you see uh, Indians have done quite well in so many other parts of the world also, apart from India. Of course. There are many famous doctors who are Indians in the West, uh, many famous lawyers, many famous engineers, you know, CEOs of many big companies that you know, they are also Indian. And India is the land where there is appreciation of family and human and cultural values, right? Much more than any other place in this world. And respect for the divine, right? Because I stay here in Germany. I, Whenever I go towards the city center, I see that the churches here, they are fully empty. There's nobody. Absolutely nobody here. It's very unfortunate. It's the same if you go to any other country in Europe or in America. It's the same. right? Why is this happening? Because as Kaliuga is progressing, people are becoming more and more alienated from their spiritual wisdom. right? It's happening in India also. But the thing in India is at least uh, there's a lot of spiritual culture still there. And there are a lot of different uh, missions which have come up in India, which have done great work and there is this revival of spirituality going on. So, let us take part in it. Now, whenever I talk to Indians, they are always telling me, you know, they are, they are associating themselves with some yoga, some meditation, some astrology, some numerology, some palmistry, you know, some Ayurveda, something or the other is going on always. They are either associated with uh, some movement of you know Sadhguru, safe soil or whatever, some some yogi, some swami, or Baba Ramdev, or Srila Prabhupada, or somebody or the other, some some great personality they are following, right? And of course, there are people from the other countries also who are coming to India and studying Indian culture, right? So therefore understand that we are very fortunate. Because we have got this divine knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita within us from our childhood, right? Especially uh, people in North India, you know, and also in South India have seen. So therefore, let us spread this divine knowledge, the knowledge of wisdom of the rishis and the saints and the sages and make India the true India, the true Bharat in 2047, all right? Thank you very much. Congratulations to everyone and wish you all the best. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Jai Bharat. Thank you.